Hello fellow tube surfers, this is Bubba Drew, and welcome back to Seaview, the wonderful city that is within the game, Reckless Driver. Now, I have been uh, sort of avoiding the new build, mainly because it's still relatively unfinished, and the races don't appear to work, and I feel like there's only a certain amount of amusement that's in the roam mode. I mean, I love free roaming games, but uh, eventually you gotta have something else to do. Uh, but yeah, I decided to play this game, though, because I wanted to showcase some of the new vehicles that were added. Um, three of them I'm gonna show are official. One of them is a mod that someone made. Um, we're gonna start off with the official vehicles because I feel like that's the best way to start out. Um, this car right here is known as the Hall ZV440. I hope I said the model name correctly because I always get numbers and letters and car names screwed up. I mean, of course, <laughs> certain ones I remember just because their cars are really like, like, take for example, the 300 SL. That's one that I remember. But when it's some of the newer cars, I don't remember very well. Okay, as you can see, the uh, physics are still just a little bit wonky. And uh, one thing, one worrying thing I noticed is that cars are prone to spontaneous stalling. So let's just restart right now. Anyways, uh, that's a little issue that I have no idea why it exists. I have no idea why it was implemented or why it's occurring, but it happens. Yeah, this is kind of a neat car. It's like a Opal Speedster combined with like a Lotus. Opal Speedster is a bit of an obscure car. And it was never actually sold in America. But oh well. That's why I like being a car nut. Uh, let's go to the construction side. I mean, this is a sports car. It shouldn't be able to do any sort of off-road stuff. Okay, and that's why. Because it'll hit a rotary girder and then stall right out. Rotary girder. Let's see how good this car functions as a submarine. Oh, wow, this is a wonky camera view right here. Also, particle effects. You see the water all on the... Come on! So yeah, the stalling is a bit of a... a bit of an irritant, but uh, I think I'll manage for now. Just don't hit a curb, because this car is very sensitive and will probably stall. There's a... There's like a rip in space-time right here. Do you see that? <laughs> on the road, there's like a glimpse into another dimension or something. I'm gonna have to call Marty and Doc, see if they can fix the space time continuum. I have no idea why I made that reference. It's probably because I've been watching those movies recently. And I actually have a model kit of uh, Back to the Future Part 3 DeLorean coming. It's a pretty cool model, it's a snap together. And that's the one with the white wall tires and the control tubes on the hood. It's pretty cool. Or it should be pretty cool when it comes, anyways. Why is there a giant cinder block blocking the freeway? That's going to anger a lot of people. A lot of angry motorists. Oh, well. Yeah, this is a nice car to just cruise around in. You just look around, take in the sights. It's not the fastest thing but it does handle. And it's just a car you can have fun in. And with a skilled driver, it could probably compete with even the fastest sports cars. I, however, am not the most skilled driver out there, so there's that. Driving along the freeway is actually pretty nice. I mean, that's one of the things I always did when I played Midtown Madness. Oh, crap. I'd never had much control issues though. Holy crap, this thing it didn't stall and it spun it spun out. Holy crap. Also, you might not notice this, but whenever I hit the brakes, whether it be for reversing or for braking, there are these blocks that appear. That is supposed to be the tail lights. Cause uh, within the game you have to have several different objects to represent 
different parts of the car. But for example, headlights and taillights have their own models and all that. So do the wheels, the body, the collision as well. And all that kind of stuff. I've really got to get into making mods for this game. I've been considering making a driving game for a while, but I have no idea how to program. And I only have minimal experience using programs like SketchUp to model and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Blender is the re recommended source, and I have no idea how to use Blender. It's just really complicated. Moving on, we have the Scalitz GT. Now, this is a tuner car, as you can probably tell just by the way it sounds. Ooh, it's cool. um, but yeah, we go. It's like a tuner car. It's a mix of a bunch of different vehicles. I mean, the windows seem kind of like a bulkier version of a Nissan Silvia S15. Uh, the rear lights are reminding me of something, but I can't really, I can't really put my finger on it. Uh, and the front end, for some reason, reminds me of the Integra. It's sort of a mismatch, or mishmash, I should say, of a bunch of different tuner cars. It's even got a wing, and that, that is awesome, because everyone knows wings add a horsepower. We're going to see how it does going over a jump, though. I mean, I see them tuck under truck trailers a lot. Uh, and as you can see, they can jump truck trailers. At least in movies and games, anyways. But yeah, since it's a tuner car, um, I believe that it's front-wheel drive. I can't tell though because all the cars kind of handle similarly uh, but I would assume a car like this would be front wheel drive I mean it's got the crazy loud exhaust note it's got the wing on the back it's, it's pretty much a tuner's dream I mean it could also be really loud I'm just dishing out stereotypes I like all cars I, I just want to make that really clear right now I'll throw out some overused stereotypes and stuff like that about certain cars, but never take them too seriously. Next, we move on to what is, I think, the highlight of this particular build. This is the Rumbler GT. It appears to be based off of a Nova combined with some Plymouth elements here and there, especially with the Shaker hood. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty cool one. It even has a muscle car sound. Um, some of the cars in this game, uh, no, off no offense, but they kind of have vacuum cleaner engine sounds. Especially in the old days of Reckless Driver. But then again, I hear that it's very hard to replicate engine sounds. It's probably because when you, when you record a real car, it's a little bit... Grimy, a little uh, um, what the word is. And usually, you can hear it in Forza a lot, especially when you're driving like a high-end race car. The sound always sorts of sort of drowns out. It almost becomes a full once you get to a higher RPM. It's probably because it's breaking the recording equipment. Whereas this with games like this, I don't really mind if they don't. I mean, this right here, this sounds enough like a V8, right? so congrats for that car That's actually cool. I don't know if the sounds are actually created by him, though. It might, they might be like assets or something, but I don't know. I know the bus is kind of like a combination of assets, like, because it's kind of got... It's got two engine sounds that I can recognize. Well, one engine sound that I can recognize. The other is sort of added in just to make it sound a bit more easily. Uh, if, you, if you couldn't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I, don't, I actually can't remember if I mentioned the vehicle or not, but I'm talking about like the bus and the trucks and all that kind of stuff. Alright. 
I would do more driving of the Rumbler GT, but I really want to move on to the main feature of this video. And that would be Stadium Buggy from Dirt 3. This is a modded vehicle. This is someone, some, well, something that someone created, someone within the community. It is, as you can tell from the title, it's from Dirt 3. It is a stadium buggy. It has 11 or so liveries. I'm just gonna use the Castro livery though because I think it looks cool. It's classic. Um, and Dirt 3 has some pretty complex car models in it. I actually quite like the way this thing is simplified. Like it's got enough detail to be quite a good mod and still look like the vehicle that was in the Dirt games. But it also fits in pretty well with this. You know, it's got the open cockpit and all that kind of stuff. Enough talking about it though, let's get to driving it. It's also quite fast as well. I did some test driving with it just to see if the mod would work if I installed it. I'm in first gear still, and it's passing 125. That That is nuts. Also, it's a little bit drifty. And it's prone to spontaneous stallouts as well, just like every other car in this game. Another thing you have to take in mind with these uh, mods is that they have their own hitboxes too, so sometimes they can be a little bit wonky. But with this, it's pretty good as long as you stay on the road. Once you go off-road, it's a little bit crazy. Which is kind of weird for an off-road buggy from a rally game. But oh well, holy crap, 140. That's actually really, really fast for this game. I don't know what the fastest standard vehicle is in this game. Dang it, we got another stall out. But anyways, as I was saying, I don't know what the fastest top speed for a standard car in this game is. Um, but I don't think... I don't think anything can touch this thing. I mean, it's, it's just getting out of first gear, and it hits like 140 miles an hour. And that's pretty crazy. Unrealistic, but crazy. Unless, of course, if it's a land speed record car, which it isn't. Um, yeah. Let's go to the archipelago area, the little island uh, town. Also, I think it might be front wheel drive because the front tires are smoking like crazy. Although I don't even know if that's a thing in this game, like cars that are front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. I think it's just they drive. But then again, I'm not entirely sure. Actually, you know what? Um, I mean, I don't know if this crap that was a 360 right there uh, I don't know if a whole lot of people are gonna see this so this message might go fall onto deaf ears but I have a challenge for mod creators and all that kind of stuff to make the fastest modded car in this game currently I think this buggy is the fastest actually I'll do another speed run just to Okay. I'll do another speed run just to get a more definitive top speed out of this thing. Alright, I believe I have found a suitable road. Uh, this, should, this should be able to determine a top speed for this thing, and I assume it'll be insane. So, three, two, one. Let's see how fast this thing can go. Alright, so currently, we're going over the normal, or what would be normal, first gear shift into speed. Okay, now we're going 90. I'm going to try to put as little steering input in as possible. Possible, because still like that's probably going to happen. Oh crap, road curves! Okay, into the water. Into the water we go. What the heck? How, the, how did that happen? I, I'm actually outside of the normal boundaries of the map. I have no idea how I did that glitching physics that's how I think we've uh, backed up enough and found a proper road I wish you could do like a burnout start so it's a bit more dramatic oh well three two one let's go 
Yeah, as I was saying though, the warps in space-time are gonna definitely disturb this run for sure. And then when I try to correct myself, I always usually overcorrect myself. Okay, now there's no rips though, so that's a good thing. Good steering inputs. 150. 150 barrier has been broken. 160. 170. <clears throat> okay, so 173 miles an hour before I hit the wall. It's not too bad. Uh, anyways, with that, with that out of the way, I think it would be a good time to end this video here. Oh no, I damaged it. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually quite liking this build, and I'm liking the fact that someone's already made a mod for it. And it's a pretty cool one at that. Dirt 3 Stadium Buggy. Um, if you go to the official site, you can download it under Downloads. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you like this video. If you did, feel free to leave a comment saying so. And with that being said, I will see you all later.